How you doing? How you doing? Hello. How you doing? Well, you're the first, you're our first first guest, so uh, welcome to the uh, uh, tonight's event. Um, so, uh, Mrs. Pronounce your name. Barnett. First name. Laura. Laura. Okay, I just see, I just see the L. Well, um, we, we just. Uh, we just waiting on everyone to, to join in, but welcome to the event tonight. This is the Women of Virtue um, Women Conference, and um, I'm just facilitating with your uh, guest prophetess. She has just entered the room, uh, Ken and Nicole. Great. How you doing? Candy, you look lovely. Good So, um, you know, we, we're already recording, we're already recording. So, uh, welcome to the Women of Virtue um, Zoom Conference. Uh, I'm Prophet Charles. This is Prophetess Ken Nicole. The different uh, guests are, are, or visitors are, are, are coming in. We're going to give everyone some time to come on in, and then we're going to get started. Um, and I'm making and sending some last minute links to, uh, to everyone. We uh, also have our other. Uh, how uh, uh, other leaders coming in coming in soon? Oh. We want to ask everyone if you could uh, mute yourselves except for uh, the person speaking uh, so there won't be any background noise. And uh, did I hear, was that a child making a noise? I'm not sure. Okay, I just I'm always checking if anybody get any issues that needs some prayer. Always let us know. We will be taking prayer requests at the end of the, uh, the meeting. So um, and we got some, some um, things going on in the chat. Precious, are you gonna uh, turn your camera on? Okay, iPhone. Well, God bless you. Okay, I get you. I get you. But I still praying for the uh, the person who know us. I think that's who this is. So we got uh, Prophetess Cannon Nicole, Prophetess Rain Lewis, and Prophetess Precious Love. <laughs> and so uh, we got our got our guest, uh, our host, uh, Woman of God, for the um, um, for the for the meeting tonight. And this is the uh, I guess what twenty twenty two Women of Virtue uh, Women's Conference. And uh, we're going to take the time to let everyone come on in. Uh, but um, I guess while we ask you to come on in, I just want to just reiterate, reiterate that uh, the purpose of this, uh, well, you know, is, is, is birth from uh, I guess my ministry and um, making sure that God's sheep uh, are, are, are fed, that they have the things that they need. And, you know, they're um, as men and women, we all, we, we, we each, Everyone in the body of Christ um, needs ministering to, and some of us have special needs. So I wanted to do something. I've done something with the men, the brothers, 
we got the brothers together and we met the needs, but I also wanted to get the women of God together and uh, have some com conversations uh, concerning issues that the women of God want, uh, I want to address and the women of God could, could talk about. Uh, thank God for everyone here. Thank God for, um, you know, just so, uh, and I guess uh, um, our host is Ken Nicole and we have co-host Rain and Precious and they we talked and discussed some issues that the women of God want to address and to iron, sharp as iron. And so they're going to uh, lead us. I'm just, I really want to wait at least about 10 minutes and let some people come on in. <laughs> if everyone feels free to ask questions, you, you, there's, there's no question that you cannot ask. That's the whole purpose of this. If you want to ask questions, um, share, share, make it share. It's all about sharing. Please don't feel, I know some of us are a little timid, that may be um, as used to talking or speaking, but I'm, I'm all about how, how does someone know there's a need? How can I address all the, the leaders address issues if we don't know what the issues are? So, um, you know, you guys feel free to ask questions and give your input and insight. And um, we're gonna just uh, wait a few more minutes. Um, and let some, let some more, more, more people come in. But um, I know right now, um, we can, um, I know we got Candy. Uh, Candy's here. Um, Rain is here. Precious is here. I can't see who that is in the middle right here. Is that, who is that? I know that's Sister Alma. And Alma is in, in, all the way from the UK. Shalom, everyone. Mike <laughs> is going to scare everyone. I'm not going <laughs> to. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, we, have Kareem, are you? we have Kareem, we have Shayo, Miche, Shantanit, uh, Yvonne, iPhone. I think that is um, uh, Lakeisha <laughs> at work. Is that you, uh, Nikki? Uh, this is Patricia Gidge with the iPhone. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we thank God for everyone who's here and um and those who are coming. We still want to give maybe some people some, some time and um you know they to come on in. Um and then maybe if you guys uh had any uh we just wait a few more minutes and then we'll get started. So I don't want to leave it. But everybody have a good day. So far, so good. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rain looking all nice. She's on that, uh, she's on the deck. Mm -hmm. Got the wind blowing through your hair and stuff. Nice sun out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, see, no, no, I'm, I'm, Rain, Rain is um, at her uh, her lake house, <laughs> enjoying. Um, yes, yes, she's at her lake house enjoying, you know that yeah. um, that uh, beach life. That's amazing. That's the dream right there, sis. Yeah, <laughs> we, me and my me and my son they caught three crabs today. Oh, oh. that's what I'm talking about. I haven't been on <laughs> crabbing in years. I'm telling you. I used to love it. They, it's so funny watching them grab the food and you just kind of, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so when you get the net, oh, they're just like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, we have another awesome um, woman of God and worshiper, uh, Felicia Walden, just uh, just mm -hmm. came on in. Hey, Felicia. Hello. <laughs> I just got off work. <laughs> you good, you good, girl. Uh, good to see you. You too. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, no, I, I try to like, get up as many people as possible can, and I'm going to have a, a talent event. I'm having to uh, use those those uh, those worship skills. And then um, also, uh, even thinking about that worship skills, I immediately thought of Precious. Everyone, a bit, uh, one key factor that I want to do here is connections. I'm all about kingdom connections. And you know, God didn't create us by ourselves. We are the body of Christ, like the, the 
fingers of my hand, we're all united and we all play, play an integral part in the kingdom. It's no big eyes, no big U's. We all have gifts and talent that work seamlessly together, you know, to strike a mighty bow um, fist in the enemy. But we work together, iron sharp as iron. I want you, the ladies of God, to be able to connect. I want you to be able to, uh, if you leave your name a number, share your number, share your contact. So if you need a prayer partner, you can call Ken, you can call Prince, you can call Um, you can call Karimi, you can call Rain, you can call Felicia. If you have just want a, a sister in Christ to, to learn and grow with, study the word, or just a friend. We need, as Christians need friends. You know, we all just to share this, 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 this uh, journey uh, and walk with God. So, um, so that's a big factor. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are, we have our relationship with God, but we're by ourselves, you know? And then some of us are mothers and you, know, you got a, a mothers and wives, but you don't have any community, don't have a social life. So I wanted you to have somebody who's on your team, who's supporting you and supporting your ministry, someone who could pray for you and cover you, someone you can cover and pray for. Some of you guys, I want you to find someone to mentor. Uh, some of you will be men, uh, will be mentees, but it's just good for the body of Christ. But the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. And so, you know, like the whole concept of two pieces of iron, you, when they, they cross, both of them are sharpening. One piece of iron is sharpening the other one, and the other piece of iron is sharpening it. So uh, as we um, commun communicate and pray and worship, that we'll be a bit of help and benefit to one another. And um, I think we have enough people just ready to get started. If most people come in, then uh, bless God, they can just uh, jump on to it. So um, like I said, this is the 2020 Women of Virtue Conference, Zoom conference. And we will be posting um, hello to all you guys on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Those who are on YouTube, just jump on in, put, make some, uh, put your information in the comments if you have any questions. And I will post Candy, Precious, and um, Rain's information. And look like Rain fell off. Um, no, I see it. Uh, Rain's information in the, in the uh, description so that you can contact these women of God. These women of God are available for you. Uh, you can, uh, whatever information they, they put down there on time, call them, email them. Um, and these are ministers of the gospel. These are with people who are anointed uh, and they are on fire for God. So we go ahead and turn it over to uh, Candy's hands. And what I want to do is uh, the speaker speaks and she'll, that they'll uh, unmute themselves. Everyone else mute yourself. So there won't be any background noise. And then if you want to speak, um, like take yourself off mute uh, or, or you know, take yourself off, off mute, speak, and then put yourself back on mute. So, you know, it, so, we can, so it can be very clear, okay? All righty. Okay. So can you guys hear me before we start? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, you can hear me. So um, today we're going to be talking about what is a virtuous woman and how does that look throughout different stages of our life, because we are all at different stages of our life, whether we are single, we're married. Um, some people may not even, you may not want to be married, but God still wants you to live a virtuous life in a woman that is described in Proverbs 31. So um I want to start off with the other ladies on here, and I want you guys to tell me in your words, what do you feel is a virtuous woman? Um, can we start with Precious? I know she's on. Uh, well, I, I thank God, um, first of all, just for knowing him. And I really believe that uh, when we begin to act in our faith, first of all, taking that first step and just knowing God and meeting Jesus and deciding to follow him. I think that's the first step. It's, it's really just a matter of listening for his voice. And when we start being a little weird because we're hearing from God, <laughs> then <laughs> it's just, you know, you know, when you start talking to him, it's the first step to being virtuous because he starts changing everything like our whole worldview, the way we look at things, the way we feel about things, just everything. Um, so yeah, I believe that a woman who's in touch with the Lord is uh, someone who's a woman of virtue, who's willing to just listen to his voice. 
Ms. Rain, you want to chime in? Yeah. Hold on for one Can you come back to me? Because my baby upset right now. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, a virtuous woman is sometimes a mother that's handling many things. And that is also something that's described in scripture whenever they talk about a virtuous woman. They talk about also a woman who takes care of many chores in her household. Basically, a virtuous woman is also a woman who is basically, y'all, she a boss. A virtuous woman is a boss. And um, today, I want to go ahead and start off by reading um, the scripture that basically talks more about a virtuous woman. And that scripture is in Proverbs 31 and verses 10. Hold on one second. Here with me. Okay. Okay. So it talks about basically this young man, basically the from what I was reading in Proverbs 31, verses one through nine, it's as if he's getting advice from someone, an elder, and this person is telling him what to look for in a virtuous woman. And this is where it starts. It says, verse 10, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth four more than rubies. Her husband is full of confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm. All the days of her life, she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So I'm going to stop right there and we're going to just start talking about the verses that we just read. Um, I'm curious, is, are we still connected? Because my screen is looking a little weird. Somebody else. All right. Thank you. You're good. All right. So it says, a wife of noble character who can find she is worth more, far more than rubies. So it says that she is very valuable. And like I said before, a virtuous woman is not just a woman who is a married woman, it is an unmarried woman also. It's just a woman of God who has standards and high character. So, um, in that, I want to just throw out a question, I guess. Of, it says, a wife of noble character who can find. Um, she's far more worth than Ruby. How have you guys discovered your value? How has God, how have you found your value as far as you being a virtuous woman that is far more valuable than rubies? You guys care to share how um, you found your value? Precious, since you're on the screen. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I um, I thank God that, you know, he brings us from the world and shows us who we are because, like, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have very much value. Um, you know, it talks about uh, her price is far above rubies. And, um, and it's funny because as you're reading it, it's like he's speaking to me, like, because he's like, your name is precious. It means price shift and the value of it. And I'm just like, ah, see, it's like he's even trying to show me even tonight, like your price is above rubies. And it's just like, ah, OK, I'll remember that next time somebody calls me by my name because I'm like, you know, but um, the value is like um, it says God, when we, when we're born again in him, it's like he puts himself inside of us so that we're no longer taking on our own identity, but the, the identity of Jesus. And so when the enemy sees us, he doesn't see anymore just us anymore, someone who can be manipulated, taken advantage of and things, but someone who's operating in the power of God himself. And that value is so much greater than we can even do. We can't do any of it of our, our own. But I'd rather be, you know, you know, dead in Christ, so to speak. <laughs> um, it's no longer I, but Christ that lives inside of me. And so that value is, I mean, his value is the value that we, we carry. Um, he bought us with a price. And that price that he gave was his very life. And so the fact he did that for us, it's like we're doing the same thing for him as we walk with him. Um, and so... And whatever that means for each of us, you know, as we go on our journey with him, 
It's like we have to carry the cross and walk in faith. But um, the price of giving our life is like that promise on the other side, which is whether we live to see the rapture and we go up, which would be nice, <laughs> or when we leave this planet and we go to heaven um, to see the Lord face to face, um, it'll be well worth it. So that value is something greater than anything we can even find on the planet. Like, you know, we can, we can look forward to, and God said he gives us the power to get wealth so that we can fulfill his covenant in the earth. He wants us to have money, all these different things, you know, super cool house on the hill, all those things. Um, but he also just wants us to be with him when we finish and finish strong. So, um, you know, nothing that we can put a, a value. I think even it's far above rubies because it's heavenly. <laughs> okay, sorry. I just, I'm gonna let someone else start. <laughs> Does anybody want to chime in on how you found, um, your value in Jesus Christ and your relationship with him before we move on. Okay. So I will go. Okay, okay, stop. I'm sorry. Hi. Um I would say the I, I, I found my value um the moment that I stopped letting the words of other people identify me. Uh, I used to have issues with anger and reacting uh, because I was hurt. So I would, I would react and kind of look like that other person. And when I would say to people, like, I'm a disciple, I'm a, I'm a woman of God, I'm leading, I'm leading other people, I'm a mother, I could not look like how everybody else looked when I was responding. I'm like, I have to show grace and love just like I speak about it, and then just being an influence up to my child, I decided that regardless of what somebody says to put me down or try to identify me, to realize that the enemy is the king of lies, and he's going to say those negative things because God did not say those things about me. Reading my word a lot more and really getting to know God's heart for me, and then when I started to love myself more, accept myself the way that I was, being around community and people that loved and supported me, and then just really going after God and being intentional with my relationship with him, I found my value in how God identifies me. And then that's when I started identifying myself. And when other people would try to put labels and try to identify me by their own standards, it didn't phase me anymore. So now if I hear it, my reaction isn't with anger or with defending myself. It's okay. And I'm showing that grace now. And I know I don't have to defend myself. God is my vindicator. And knowing that he takes care of me, He'll, he fights my battle. And then when I really started to internalize that, I'm like, nobody can break me. I'm, I'm strong enough to, to get up every day, raise my head up high, and I'm still here. So there's a reason and there's a purpose, and that, that's what gave me my value. Thank you, Felicia. For oh, you're welcome. So one thing I caught on to when she was speaking is she now knows her value because Jesus Christ showed her her value. So a virtuous woman is a woman that knows her value and she knows that she is far worth more than like rubies. Like she is so valuable and she knows this. This is something that she walks in this authority and in, in who she is because God told her who she was and she believes it now. Um, it says in the next scripture that her husband has full confidence in her and left nothing of her. Okay, thank you for joining, Tiffany. Okay, so it says her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. So, okay, here's something I want to talk about, okay? Um, it says her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. I want to talk about some of the single ladies, okay? Um, how should I say this nicely? Okay, giving away the value 
before you're supposed to give away the value. And I don't necessarily just mean like um, in a sexual sense, but that also what I'm talking about. Um, her husband is enjoying her value. So it's supposed to be her husband. But a lot of times in the world we live in, a lot of times we give our value away way too early because we may not know our value. So I want you guys, um, I want to talk about how it's looking right now in today's society as far as how um, people are shacking up, people are um, having relationships that they shouldn't have, giving parts away of themselves that they should not give away ahead of time. Um, Charles? I totally understand that. Um, what you're saying, um, and um, even that they, uh, your value is number one. We all the sons and daughters of the Most High God. In the Ecclesiastes, it says that the whole duty of man is to serve God. All our gifts and talents come from Him. So everyone needs to have a relationship with God first. That's where your value comes from. That's where your heart comes from. That's everything comes from from the Father. And then, um, like you say, if even if it's a single woman, a single woman, you're devoted unto the Lord. Jesus is your father. He's also, he's your strength. He's everything. So um, you can, shouldn't put anyone above the Lord. If you're not married, if you're a young single woman, a gray man, I know you're, you're a, 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 a teenager, young woman, you, you're devoted to Jesus. He's your father. He's everything. And so even friendships, you shouldn't be putting friends above God. You shouldn't be putting, um, even if, if some people go off to college and they, they make college an idol. So I'm going to an Ivy League school. They, they make preparations. They're taking out loans. Uh, but okay, in, in all that preparation, did you find a church home in this new city that you moved to? Or did, did you bring your Bible? You know what I'm saying? Are you looking for a, a Bible study, a good church? Are you studying the Word of God as much as you studying all these books that you're studying to get this degree? So we should never give your put that you can make anything an idol. And so you have to make sure that you put God first because you can be giving your time away to, to something that does not deserve it, even your job. Some people make their job an idol. They don't have to, because they don't have no time to study the word. They don't have no time to go to church. They don't have no time to mentor another woman of God or spend time. So we have to have a balance. And even your, your emotions, you know, you, you, you lending yourself to people and things, to the culture. You're looking at the culture to uh, give them your, you're listening to music and, and buying things that, that are beneath you as a woman of God. So we also have to, you know, just know who we are. And because if you know you who you are, like uh, like Felicia was saying, then you can't be manipulated. You can't be misused. You can know if nah, uh, that person does not mean me good. And so, um, and it, and, it, and it says that I said that the husband knows that person's uh, value. So we all have to know our value because Jesus is saying that you're mighty, powerful, and strong, but you're saying, no, not me. Jesus is saying you're anointed, but you're saying, no, not me. It's important to be to know your value. Everyone here needs to be talking to the Lord. Oh, uh, Father, what is my gifts and talents? Father, what would you have me to do? Father, strengthen my, my uh, me where I'm weak. But I challenge everyone, you need to be bold like a lion, like, like a lioness, like roar, whatever God has given you to say or do. There's only one Alma, there's only one Karimi, there's only one Nicole, there's one, only one Felicia, there's only one Candace, there's only one Shay, Precious, Shantique, Brittany, Brittany, and the other lady on iPhone. You're, you're the only one. You're fearfully in one for me. You have to roar only the way you can. You know what I'm saying? And, and be strong in, in the things that God has called you to do. I definitely agree with that. It's Can I add something quickly? Sorry, into, it's just Emma. Yeah. So um, just to touch on the, I apologize about my accent. <laughs> it's very strong. <laughs> okay, I won't apologize, but um, yeah. So just to like touch on this bit in terms of the rubies, I feel like we should look at it from, because that can easily be twisted and from a worldly point of view to mean I'm bigger than what I am in a prideful way. 
So anyone can read that verse and sort of big themselves up with that verse. And I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. But it seems like you have to look at it from God's point of view, from a spiritual point of view. And from a spiritual point of view and God's point of view, it's humbleness. You know, so it's the complete opposite of what the world will read. Literally pick this up and read it. Okay, I'm rubies. That means I'm good, I'm this, I'm that. So we have to like, okay, from the point of the Lord. So it's the opposite. It's, you know, it's humility. It's it's modesty. It's um, respect. It's, um, yes, yeah, everything that is completely opposite of what that looks like it is ruby you understand so it's just the complete opposite for me personally i'm african my mum's nigerian my dad's Ghanaian, and i've come from like a lot of um, a background where strong christian like family like back home there's a strong christian family and you know the women in the villages the, those are like the epitome of like virtuous women like completely just stripped of everything of this world and just literally just them and God and just just the simplest life so um yeah and so again it, it looks like it's a prideful statement to say okay um she's you know her worth is so a, a, a worldly standpoint it looks like okay I'm good I'm this I'm, I'm I'm this I'm this everyone look at me but from the standpoint of the Lord it's completely opposite. It's humbleness, it's meekness, it's quietness, it's modesty again, you know. So it's just we have to look at it from the point of the Lord instead of the point of what it, you know, it's just we have to look at it from a spiritual point of view, kind of thing. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that. Humble beauty in God's eyes. Yeah, yeah. And so. you're actually pretty. So don't be oh, thank you. Beautiful. thank you that's i was telling um prophet charles like i was in a zoom meeting with ladies from america and then everyone was american and then when i started to speak everyone was looking at me like what <laughs> where did you come from because <laughs> it seems so weird yeah but i praise god god is faithful so yeah hello if i could say something first of all um uh, uh, never again apologize for your accent. Okay. You have nothing to apologize for. You see what I'm saying? If anyone doesn't understand it, just listen to you talk. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have a beautiful accent. You know what I'm saying? Thank so you. So never again apologize for who you are. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We, we apologize to the Lord for others when we sin. If you have not sinned, there's nothing wrong with your accent. Your accent is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So if people aren't used to that, well, you, you, you've been a blessing to them to uh, uh, awaken their uh, senses to something new and something cultural and something beautiful uh, outside of the box of what they're used to. And then yeah. two, also that, that scripture says, her price is more than rubies. Rubies is a very precious stone. It's very costly. So, but a woman of virtue is, is worth more than a ruby. And even in today's standard, I would even say down if I could go back and with rubies then, but uh, her price, price is more than diamonds. A mm -hmm. virtuous woman, is her price is more than diamonds, more than silver and gold, because a virtuous woman, who can find? Mm -hmm. Even looking at society, you don't see, you don't see virtuous women in, uh, on the news media. You don't see virtuous women in our society, in the government. You know what I'm saying? You guys are the exception. You are the exception. So never apologize, even men. You know, uh, the Bible says we're the elect. You're, you're, you're the, we're the, the saints of the minority because you hold Jesus and his principles uh, to the highest esteem. And there's glory in you, value in you as a God because the God's spirit is in you. So there's nothing more valuable in you than the principles that you portray as a daughter of, multi, a daughter of God. People in the world can buy diamonds, they can buy silver, but they don't have the righteousness of God uh, in them. They don't have morals and value and wisdom, you know, uh, so it's important. Now, how are you doing, Jenny? Uh, uh, thank God you enjoyed the uh, meeting. We're going to have everyone on mute until it's time to speak. So if you put yourself on mute, and then when you like to speak, take yourself off uh, mute, but we don't have any background noise. So go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, again, Candy. So um, 
as we was about to go into the next scripture, it was saying that um, she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. I'm gonna stop right there because what I want to iterate on is that this is a woman that has goals. This is um, whether you are a married woman or you are, you know, you're married, you're single, or anything in between. You're somebody who has goals and you're not lazy. Um, it talks about how she works with her hands and she works eagerly, which means that she is eager to do the work that she has to do, whether it's taking care of her family or, um, you know, she whether she's providing for her family or she's doing God's work too. She's working eagerly in whatever her ministry may be because your family is also your ministry. Um, so I want to talk about more of how um, I believe a lot of times when we get into relationships, we kind of forget ourselves as women. And many of us will stop doing the things that God has given us to do with our hands. And we will put more emphasis on that relationship. But we really need to stick with what God has given us from beginning because that adds to that relationship. So like it's talking about here, he's having value in his wife. So if you stop doing the things that God tells you to do, it's not benefiting you in that relationship that you're trying to move into. So um, let's see. It says she gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servant. So my question is, how has God revealed to you what it is that you are here to do, your purpose? Anyone who knows their purpose, how has God revealed to you your purpose? Um, how has he revealed to you your purpose? Precious? Um, he just constantly just showing me stuff. Like when I was 16, I went to a church and the prophet up front pointed at me and said, you're going to be a singer. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> I said, I'm more of a rapper, but okay. But that was my mindset at the time, you know? <laughs> I mean, but, um, it just has followed me my whole life. Um, since I was like four and, um, it's like he just always keeps bringing me back to the things that he wants me to do concerning music. And um, when I got saved, I started writing about Jesus. And um, that's how I started being, you know, a gospel songwriter. Um, and I wanted to write because I've always been a writer. Um, and he always has just keep bringing me back. I feel like he just has a way of just kind of like bringing you back. Um, and I love to talk about this, how when uh, Jesus had needed him and Peter needed to pay their taxes. He didn't tell Peter to go do something way off the wall. He said, go and fish and you'll find gold in the fish's mouth. Um, and so he was, you know, he sent him to do the thing that he did, you know, he's used to doing and he always brings them back to that fishing. Even when he, um, you know, walked on water and things is all around, all surrounding the same things, you know, he was going to be a fisher. And then when he became a an evangelist he was a fisher of men is what he he told him so you know he doesn't take us too far off base of what you know our our passion and purpose is in life it's just amazing how he kind of just keeps us in that same string throughout our lives i agree um anybody else want to share how you found your purpose how god has revealed to you your purpose Well, real quick, we got some um, new guests, Aquisha and um, Brittany. We just want to um, thank God for you coming to the uh, Women of Virtue Conference. We want to ask everyone to um, have you um, be on mute until you would like to speak. So we don't hear any background noise. Uh, everything's going good. Ashley, uh, Rain, are you in a position to uh, speak now? Yeah, I'm in a position. I'm in a good position. Now. Okay. Well, uh, the Lord, once I started getting close to my relationship with him, he started giving me dreams of like me going out in the marketplace and like praying for other people. So 
that's really what I've been doing. What he's been having me to do is like go out the marketplace and pray for others and minister to others. You know how the word of God tells us to uh, preach the good news and lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. So once I started stepping out on faith and actually doing it, the Lord started showing me like, okay, this is what I want you to do. Continue doing this. So he shows me in dreams where I'm praying for others and the Holy Spirit is like hitting people and they're getting healed. And so I'm just surrendering my life and being a willing vessel to, for him to continue using me to go out and do those things. And like you guys are saying, you know, I have to like just be bold. You have to be bold and just go out and do it and step out on faith. Anybody else want to um, chime in on how God has told you your purpose? Um, I want to agree with Rain. Uh, Paris Rain. Yeah, Rain. Um, so like ever since I was, ever since I started um, seeking uh, the Lord, like um, I the more that I started consuming my time with Him, uh, the more that I went and, and seeing like how ministry works and how people are casting out demons, you know, preaching the gospel. I was interested. Like I, I was I, I was really hungry to like do that myself. And so like um, I would I would pray and the Lord would definitely like reveal dreams to me like what I, I, I guess at least like a picture of what He wanted me to do, and so um, yeah that's a part. And also, I know like uh, uh, Prophet Charles also helped me to um, like, it was just like more confirmation that he spoke to me about what the Lord wanted me to do. And so uh, um, I definitely, I think I got to a point where I wanted to be included in that and just like watching videos that would help me grow. And so the more that I um, started to consume myself in that information, all that like um, in the word and everything, it started happening in my dreams. So then like, I have like I have like a little picture of what I'm supposed to be doing in, like um, in person. So like, that's something that's very interesting. I understand because that's that's um one of the strongest ways God speaks to me is in through my dreams. Um, it definitely says like in Acts two that you know in the last days that's how He's going to speak to a lot of us is through dreams, and He's definitely using that method. Anybody else want to share how um you found your purpose? Hi, uh, my name is Laura. Um, I would say that from years ago. Um, when I was a little bit younger <laughs> than I am now, um, I think my purpose purpose comes to me, I would say time after time, meaning that it started at one thing, but it keeps on going over and over. In other words, you don't stay the same place. God reveals sometimes things slowly. He's not all the time going to reveal things all at one time. As I was a young one, young one, really young, I think probably I was 14 or 15 years old. I remember that I had a love for just wanting to crochet, do things with my hands. I was so lucky. I had a teacher that really, I was having a lot of problems. And actually at that time in my life, God must have sent her just at the right time because she was put in my life and she was a home economic teacher. And when I tell you, she lived at like maybe two blocks from my mom's house. And every once in a while, when my mom thought it was safe and was, she would let me go over there and continually crochet, knitting and doing all kinds of things. But that have led to this point in my life of me being a florist. And through that, through that, uh, that has been so many other things that God has connected me to because my gift is multi-gift. It's not just one gift. And uh, it's like I say, it's kind of like he reveals slowly. God don't always give you everything at one time. He gives you little pieces. And even at this age right now, God is still not finished. He still is unfolding and revealing. And he'll reveal when he thinks he's ready for us. When we're ready, he'll reveal it. And I believe that's just how God does things because he knows exactly what we need to know and when we need to know it and how we need to move forward with it so we could bless others because my gift blesses so many other people it's not just a florist thing it's something that i give pleasure and love to other people for i love that gift it's a compassionate gift so god knows exactly what to give and what time to give it in so that's what i have to say thank you Ms. laura mm -hmm. Does anybody else want to share before we um move on to the next part in the subject? Anybody else want to share how they found their purpose? Just a quick question. Could you hear me when I was talking earlier? Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Just making sure. <laughs> okay. Well, 
as we just heard from Ms. Laura and from Precious and the other ladies that spoke, it is very important that God, um, that you get to know God and have your relationship with him so he can reveal to you your purpose. And as Ms. Laura said, it's not something that's going to come all at once. God is going to reveal things to you slowly. He will not just hit you with everything at one time. Uh, he's going to give it to you a little bit at a time. He's going to build on it. And it's very important to have and to know your purpose before you enter into these marriages or, or these, you know, a marriage, a relationship, because you want to know who you are before you enter into a serious relationship like that. And furthermore, you bring more to the table when you know who you are in Christ. So it says also um, in verse 14, she is like a merchant ship, brings her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servant. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. So I want to stop right there. And it's talking about basically, you guys, this woman is not a lazy woman. Like I said, in today's society, she would be labeled as a boss. And what I mean by that is a boss comes in many different forms. She doesn't have to be a Fortune 500 type of company to be a boss. She can just be a mother who is managing her home. It comes in different forms, but this is a woman that is about her business. It's about her father's business. She's about the business of her home. If she's a homemaker, if she's a single woman that's in school, she's about her business. So it says that she considers a field and buys it out of her earnings and she plants a vineyard. So that means she's a planner. She plans ahead for the future. Like I said, this woman is a boss. She plans ahead. And that's things that bosses do. These are women who um, plan ahead for things that are to come. To me, a good example of this would be Ruth. Um, she was a woman who was not lazy at all. She went out into the field and did what she had to do. Whenever her and her mother-in-law, Naomi, came into that new land, they didn't have anything, but she had her hand. That was the tool that she had, and she used what she had in order to make a living. And God wants us to do the same thing. He wants us to add value to whatever situation that we are in. So um, let's see. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about is the image um, is going to come up a little later, but we're going to just go ahead and get into it now. Um, how do you guys feel as far as what does the image of a virtuous woman looks like to you? Um, and what I mean by that is how does she talk? Um, how does she handle herself in situations? Um, and what is the difference right now between a virtuous woman and a worldly woman. What is the difference that you find precious? What is the difference you find between a virtuous woman and a worldly woman? Can anybody can answer? Was, um, uh, oh, sorry. Did someone want to say something? Yes, yeah, someone, oh. someone else can answer. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, well, uh, uh, Okay, so uh, I was gonna say um, that I think between a, a virtuous woman and a, a worldly woman is, it's just a, can you, can y'all hear me? Sorry. Okay. Um, it's just, there's a, there's a more of, of a conviction in a woman who, who operates in the power of God. It's like, um, you know, she seems to be more set on, um, on being careful to follow the will of God. Um, like a, there was a scripture that came to me while you were talking. Um, a prudent wife is of the Lord. Um, let me see. It says, uh, the, I believe it says a, a prudent wife is of the Lord. But um, 
but just a prudent one. Oh, house and riches is Proverbs 19, 14. It says house and riches are the inheritance of fathers and a prudent wife is from the Lord. And it's just like, um, it's almost like it's saying, it's almost like a house and riches to have prudence. Um, you have a woman who's going to go and seek God for, um, for guidance before she says something, before she does anything. She's going to cover you in prayer. She's pleading the blood over your life. She's, she's casting out demons out of the household before you even get home from work and stuff. I mean, this is the difference because if you have a worldly woman, you know, um, because and I, before I got saved in my ignorance, I would do things like listen to secular music throughout the house instead of filling up my house with worship. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't praying over certain things. I would just, you know, kind of like blindly go about things. But when I got saved, then I started praying in tongues. I was trying to spend time in the, with the father, trying to get to know him, reading my Bible and stuff like that, bringing a word here and there. You know what I'm saying? And it's just different. It's just a whole different experience. It's just a whole different thing. And being in God's presence, like your conversation is going to be co completely different with a worldly woman than if you're talking with someone who knows him, because you know how God is. He has currents. He's doing things at different times. He's speaking to the body about certain things and topics and subjects. And the enemy launches attacks at us as Christians, like at the same time. So it's like we're all getting this um, experience happening to us. And it's just like, you know, that's happening to me right now. And if you're in that um, in that vein with, with God, it's a whole different perspective of the world, period, than, you know, coming from the outside looking in and just not having no, having no idea what's going on, you know. Um, that's why it's just so great to kind of be drinking from that living water because we, you know, we're able to tap into and, um, and receive from the vine. Um, okay, so yeah. <laughs> Who else wants to say something about that? This is an exciting topic. There was someone else that wanted to share. You want to go ahead and talk now? Yes. I will also say that um, a virtuous woman is also gentle in spirit. I feel like, you know, she shows grace and kindness and how she speaks and how she presents herself. So you know, a lot of, a lot of women who know who God is know that like, like, for example, you know, an argument, they say in the word, it says a soft word turns to wrath. I think the virtuous woman is like the epitome of that, you know? So it's like when somebody's coming at her, whether it's at work, whether it's a family or friend, whatever, she's like, she's not, you know, kind of, you know, just kind of falling prey to that argument, you know? Responding in love, she's giving grace. She's receiving what she's hearing, but not internalizing it and just letting it, um, you know, just just not letting it kind of get to her. But always responding and reacting in a gentle way because she's a gentle soul. That's what I. Think. Can I add on to that? Mm -hmm. um, I was I was just like happy when she said that because like that's so true. I always say that because it like, comes. Um, like, like um, I know really woman obviously she lacks God. So like um, obviously like if you don't know the Lord, how can you like how can you know how to love people? You know how can you know how to uh, be kind to people and help people out? So like um, because they lack God, they don't know how to come about situations or how to approach people or how to have self respect within herself. So like you know for that argument, I, I love that. That's why um. Um, like when people, more people get into relationships, they don't know how to treat each other. And so, um, like for example, that argument, like if they're having an argument, the Bible does say, you know, um, it would be wise for you to like, and when someone's so strifeful and wrathful, a soft answer does turn away uh, a wrath or strife because um, like, and instead of you feeding in that, uh, feeding in that strife, you turn it down by uh, being meek. And that's so true. And that only comes with the Lord. You can only find that with God. Um, people who um, lack in him don't don't do that because they don't know no one teaches them that they have to find that um uh they have to find that uh, um a moral you know within the lord so yeah i love that can i add on something to what she just said yes right um uh, you know we like the word of god says you know we're going to go through troubles in this life but the word of god says to take heart you know because the lord has overcome the world so when women of God, when we go through obstacles and adversities and trials, you know, we decree the word of God over ourselves. We declare the word of God. We pray the scripture. And we trust God with every fiber in our being. And, you know, we be still and know that he's fighting our battles. But 
a woman of the world, you know, uh, when obstacles and trials come, you know, alcohol, they go to alcohol, pills, lust, um, you know, just being lovers of themselves and lovers of money. Um, they even go to new age, you know, going to those uh, mediums and uh, tarot cards. Instead of being still and waiting on the Lord, how, you know, the virtuous woman would do, they go to things of the world to get uh, just satisfaction instead of looking at things from a God's point of view they'll look at things from a worldly point of view. May I say something else? Sorry, I did something else just came into my spirit. I also think that a virtuous woman is somebody to kind of, it, it kind of sounds similar to what you said, Miss Lewis. Uh, I think a virtual, a virtuous woman is also someone who seeks God first before she goes to someone else. Um, and I can testify to this because this is something that I used to have an issue with just being in my carnal flesh, whenever I would, when situations would arise that I didn't know how to handle it, or if I just wanted to, I called, I justified myself by just quote unquote venting, but I will always go to a person first, which was, you know, ultimately dangerous because they couldn't give me the answers that I needed. A lot of times when you talk to people, they'll give you their bias reason because, you know, like they love you and they care about you, but I think that a virtuous woman is somebody who seeks God first, who goes to God first, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, if they need wisdom, if they need protection, if they have questions, if they just want to let out what they have to say, if they want, God also says we can be angry and sin not. So we can yell and scream to God and tell him how we feel. We, God even wants us to tell him that we're angry with him. Like, Lord, I'm mad at you because my situation looks like this. And you said, you were like this, but leaning on your promises, you know, talking to him instead of cussing at somebody else, like, oh, this, this is, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just being real, because that was me. And, and, and a virtuous woman always seeks God in everything that she does in the beginning, the middle, and the end for wisdom, for guidance, for her whole entire life depends on going to God first. Yeah, uh, this is Laura. I'm glad she said that because that was kind of on my mind. Um, I was thinking as she was speaking before that, I was saying like, you know, it takes a while. I think that we are virtual women. Uh, you know, we gave our life to Christ and we know that this is how we want to be and we're growing in that. But I also know that, um, man, it takes a lot to live in this world that we live in and things come, come at us all different ways. And even with that being said, I know I would handle myself way different than I would maybe 10 or 15 years ago. But I say those things because I realized that at the time when I gave my life to Christ and I decided that I want to live for Christ and I'm going to be a virtuous woman, I'm still going through all the things that in the world that we're going through. Uh, whether I'm praying, whether I'm going to church, I'm still growing. But at the same time, I'm human and I'm not going to act like I'm not human, you know, but I'm still a virtual woman. So I think a virtuous woman also is continually growing. Uh, we are growing into ourselves because God has given us more and more and more. So I just kind of, I'm glad she said that because sometimes people may get the idea that, oh, you know, I gave my life to Christ and, you know, I don't measure up to be a virtuous woman. And I think that we are growing into becoming the virtuous woman God wants us to be. We are all, we are a virtuous woman, but I think we have still have a lot of growth. I agree on that. Anybody else want to speak? I'm gonna go ahead and piggyback off of um, what Ms. Laura said. And I totally agree with what she's saying. Um, when we first come to Christ, we might not know how to walk in being a virtuous woman, but when he made us, he put that inside of us. And we did learn maybe some habits from the world, but it takes time for God to remove those things out of you. Like in Romans 12 too, I believe it talks about the renewing of your mind. So it's a process. It's not something that happened overnight. You're not just, I got it. We never gonna have it all together, okay? You never gonna have it all together, but it's a process, you know, and God slowly he purifies you, he purifies you, and he makes you more and more of that image that he created you to be whenever he made you, what he had in mind. So um, 
that was a good point that you guys made regarding um, the difference between a worldly woman and a virtuous woman and how that looks. Um, I want to go back to scripture. We're in Proverbs 31. And right now I'm reading from verse 19. It says, in her hand, she holds a distaff and grabs a spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. And when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed, and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. All right, so I'm going to stop right here. And one thing it talks about is she opens her arms to the poor, and she extends her hands to the needy. So this is basically talking about somebody who has a heart for others. A virtuous woman is a woman who has um heart for other people and she extends her um her finances or her time to other people she's not a selfish person so um let's see okay and here it says in verse 21 it says when it snows she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet this is going back to talking about whenever she's a planner. She's already planned for these events. She knows that snow is going to come at some point in time. So she plans ahead. She's a woman who is very responsible for the resources of her household, whether it's just her or it's her husband and her or her children and her, whoever it is in her household. Um, it says her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. So one thing I've caught on to is it says that she is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days to come. And um, what I caught on to is that she is not worried. She's allowing God to guide her and the things that she has to do. And she knows that he's going to carry her through. And anybody has anything they want to share regarding um, that particular verse that she's clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days to come? And what does it bring up in your mind whenever you hear that? I think she's a good planner. Um, she's financially got her step, herself together. Um, but them saying that if she could laugh for the days to come, I think she, she had planned her days well ahead. Um, she is, you know, looking at finance and know how to make sure she keep on having great finance in her family. Finance is coming through, money coming through. Yeah, I do believe so. I, I, I took it as she's a woman of wisdom. She uses her wisdom and she's wise with what she has. Um, She's, the word I, I just came in my mind was she's thrifty. Um, she doesn't, she's not wasteful. Um, it says she speaks with wisdom and is faithful instruction on her tongue. And she has faithful instruction on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So whenever it says she watches over the affairs of her household, and she doesn't eat the bread of idleness. She's not a lazy woman. Um, she's a woman that takes care of multiple things and multiple responsibilities. Um, it says her children arise and called her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. So I wanna stop right here and I wanna talk about children. Those of you who are on here and have children, how are you installing um, the word of God into your children's lives? Ms. Precious, I want to let her speak. Okay, go ahead. I'm sure Precious is tired. <laughs> okay, so for, so for me, like with my kids, we do Bible study every day. So that's imperative. I will say that. Even tell my children, above everything else, I want you to know the word of God. I want you to know who God is for yourself. I want you to know him. So that becomes before science maths english i want you to first know god that is the most important thing because when mommy's not there when daddy's not there when 
our family members are not there. The only person who's going to be there for you is God, no one else. So um, I try to do that daily. Um, and it's difficult because of the schools they go to. Like in the, the schools um, in the UK are like, they're, um, so my daughter, she's seven, my son is 11. So my daughter, she's in primary school. So I think it's, kind is it kindergarten? Is it kindergarten? <laughs> so we call it primary school. So it's like, yeah. Okay, so so her school is like 80% Muslim. Because there's a there's a there's a lot of Muslims in um, London, a high percentage of Muslims in London. So her school is like 80% Muslims. So um so she'll come back and she'll be telling me, you know, mommy this, mommy that, you know. Um, I tried to spread like the gospel with my friends and they said, you know um they can't they don't believe in that and you know just so um it's a constant thing kind of thing um where I try to instill in her that you know just 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 to stand firm in the law because it's easy for her to go to school and listen to one of her Muslim friends say no um you know Allah is you know this and for her to believe it because it you know Oh, it's just for me to instruct in them that to be strong in the Lord, you know, to stand firm in what he says and to stand firm in who he is. So that's, that's, um, and yeah, that, that's what I try and do. And we can do that through many different things, many different avenues. So yeah, just many different things, but just to stand firm in the Lord. And, you know, if, if you see them doing something bad or if you see them doing like anything bad, you you just sort of highlight okay the lord sees that it's not me it's the lord that sees that the lord sees what you're doing you know so it's just the little things really you know it's just the little things just to constantly keep pumping it in them you know <laughs> pumping those scriptures pumping the lord's love pumping everything to do with christ in them because it's just continuous really yeah so i hope that answered <laughs> your question yeah, it never ends. It never stops. It never stops. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I love it. It's true. I did that when my children were in um, the regular school. And then when I pulled them out to do homeschool, now I told them it's a Bible college. Y'all are in Bible college now. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Yeah, it's getting a lot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I definitely. And then I just told my daughter earlier today it's the same thing I said. Or yesterday I said, God sees that, whatever you're doing, whether you're doing right or wrong. It's true. So, um, you know what, when uh, you mentioned about the scripture, uh, Candy, about um, strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. This is uh, verse 25. And so it brought me to the mind, to, um, the scripture, uh, 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered, right? Um, this is the first time for me, I don't know, maybe y'all have probably seen this before, to see this verse as being a descriptor of the nature of the way her husband is treating her as well. Because it says strength and honor are her clothing. The, the husband is supposed to be a covering to us right yes. and okay. it gives us a reason to rejoice later it says and she <laughs> shall rejoice in time to come <laughs> who won't be happy and filled with joy when they're covered you know by someone who's showing them a love honor you know protecting them with strength and things of that nature and i'll be it yes she's giving she's actually exhibiting these traits as well honor and strength but I just think that, it, you know, it kind of neat because it, it kind of brought me back to the mindset of the covering that's over us. And, but God is giving us that covering, you know, God is giving us that covering as well. So whether we're married or not, we can still be clothed in strength and honor. <laughs> but it is a good thing to have uh, someone, you know, it's like we, we pray for that. You know what I'm saying? That kind of covering in a marriage as well, you know, so yeah something to look forward to <laughs> we can rejoice in time to come okay um there's another one as well um her children rise up and call her blessed her, her husband also and he praises her 
Y'all, this is talking about us and it's talking about the man too. I praise the Lord because it's like, wow, this is also putting a responsibility on the man as well in the relationship, but it's also showing us, you know, it's, it's a kind, it's kind of like it's working together hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Um, while she is operating in one way, it's also, he's also reciprocating in the other way. So he's bringing his part, she's bringing her part. And by her bringing her part, it's almost like, okay, this is helping to foster these other parts as well with him. Um, so yeah, so y'all. I don't know, I'm just getting excited with this word right now. <laughs> I know y'all probably have read Proverbs 31 over and over again, because I have too, but just to see it from that perspective, I've just been looking at it like, wow, this is bringing something out today right now. But yes, all right, praise the Lord. So yeah, that's why we get together, right? <laughs> that's time to read words. Um, like you can read something this year and then next year go back to it and you see something completely different than what you saw before. So God's always revealing something new through his word. And I really appreciate you sharing because I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to share? The original question was, we we're talking about how do you instill um, God's word into your children? But if there's anything you want to chime in on, um, anybody's free to talk right now if you want to say anything. Okay. I think something too. I think like you know how, as we're being virtuous and women of God, we need to be our kids be that example. So I know like when me and my son go like to Walmart or something, <laughs> and I like pray for someone, and like he'll say, "Mama, I'm gonna pray with you," you know. And then like the other day, I had a dream and I saw my son actually praying for a grown man, and he was like telling the man, he was like, "The Lord will forgive you any sin you've done," and I was. And when I woke up that next morning, I started thinking, God, I was amazed to see my son doing that, you know? So just like, like uh, I think Sister Alma and um, Precious Love said, you know, it's continuous. And just us being that example of being the women that God wants us to be, it's going to reflect on our kids. And they're going to go along with them, you know, train them up in the way they should go. Just by them seeing us, it's going to help them go far, you know, in God. My two-year-old was like, in the name of Jesus, just out of the blue. I was like, what happened? Did you just say that? <laughs> you know, Junior, Junior was like, he just walked in the room and was like, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll say it. Actually, I saw Brittany's hand up. Did you have your hand up, Brittany? Yes. Um, it, it finally got quiet because it was very loud a minute ago because <laughs> I have two little ones. Um, but what I do um, to teach my kids about God and about, you know, just the Bible, period, um, I, we pray with them, me and my husband, we pray with them every night. Every night. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And what I do is I, I've taught them um, certain prayers. So at night, instead of um, me praying, because, you know, I pray um, over them daily, but I let them pray so they will learn how to talk to God, even at a young age. And I even, you know, tell them, like, you know, when you're praying, just for me in general, like, you don't have to be, you don't have to be no long, grown out prayer, like, um, you just pray and just talk to God like you literally can talk to God like a normal person and a lot of people don't understand that they think that you have to be in a certain a certain way to be able to talk to God um but like right now my my kids a three-year-old and a five-year-old they know how to pray if I ask them Noah come pray with me he'll pray with me and then after the prayer he loves to say hallelujah or he say glory or like i teach them certain words to edify himself and to edify god so they'll know how to pray and you know know what to say so that's awesome um because they also get to learn who they are quickly um they get to know who god says they are and build on their relationship from an early age 
Um, anybody else want to chime in with the uh, last question about the kids or anything else you'd want to talk about at the time? Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, scripture. So it talks about, I believe, Rome 27. It says, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that she has, that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So um, something that caught my eye is I remember when reading Ruth and doing some, um, and you know, investigating into Ruth, when it talks about the city gate, and the city gate is like the main place back then where they would meet, and it's basically most of the time where men would meet to handle business. And if she's being honored and praised at the city gate, it's as if this woman has some type of nobility to her, you know, in her walk. People know who she is and she's honored at the city gate. Um, so I want to talk about how it says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So we all know we live in a society that is definitely um there's a lot of image based um as far as women and their looks. Um, we are basically judged a lot of times by the way that we are looked, but it's saying right here that we are not to, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, meaning that it only lasts for a while. And the real beauty is within. It's within who you really are in Jesus Christ. So I wanna talk more about um, beauty and the standards of beauty. Um, and, you guys, what do you feel is the standard of beauty for a virtuous woman? How should she hold herself, the physical self of her body? Um, Rain? When I, when I was uh, reading this as well, I think I just I found, figured out something the first time, like the Holy Spirit revealed to me that her attractiveness comes entirely from her character and not her physical appearance. And then the Lord took me to uh, 1 Timothy 2.10, where it says that women who are devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. So I had never caught that before. Like the entire Proverbs 31 is, is not even mentioning, you know, anything about her physical, char physical character. It's all about, you know, her character, like you said, coming from God. So I had never caught that before until just now. Yeah. I so agree with what Rain was saying about, you know, just the character of, um, of a virtuous woman, you know, um, it made me think about how the Bible talks about how Jesus wasn't comely, like, to look upon, um, it made me think about the song, you know, the song Brick House, but like it's in, in the spirit, like we're a brick house in the spirit, you know, um, everything that it, that goes together with that, um, and, uh, it's like um, meekness. Moses was the meekest person that ever, that walked the planet. And yet he was the most powerful. Um, you know, they couldn't find his bones. He, he went on up, you know, God just, you know, they, we look at, um, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth, you know, and um, our meekness is, uh, we, we think of meekness, I think from the worldly perspective, we look at it as being a weak thing, but um, meekness is not weak. It's just a matter of knowing, knowing what God is going to do and knowing that he's so much stronger. Um, and, you know, um, he even, Jesus, God even says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so, um, again, about the, the honor, giving what honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, um, us being able to um, embrace our femininity and be able to, being able to embrace who we are as um, as believers in Christ, knowing that our power is not derived of us ourselves. So we don't really like have a proud demeanor anymore because we're looking to God for our salvation. And so um, we may 
take a powerful stance because we're going to stand behind the name of Jesus Christ and you know we'll be rebuking out demons and different things like that in the name of Jesus Christ but not in ourselves and I think that that makes us different in a way and um and it's 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 going to make you when you're more meek it's, you're more tender you're, you're more uh, the joy of our of the Lord is our strength. So we're going to have a joy inside of us, a smile that's attractive and um, the sweet savor of Christ. Um, I've been pondering on the scripture that says um, that the, um, the, a Christian has, a believer has the sweet savor of Christ that is like life unto life for those that are, who believe and death unto death for those who perish. And I'm just kind of like paraphrasing it right now, but I can pull it up and try to sh put it in the chat after. But um, basically, um, we re we repel those who don't believe in Jesus. But that's just kind of come. That's the price that comes with it. But those who see him and who desire after more and want life, eternal life, they're like, that is exactly the type of woman that I want. You know, so. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, even if we look good on the, it, a, a woman can be um, so like just normal, just not even having makeup on one day, um, and a man can just be like, man, that is the perfect woman because they see the spirit, and all the other ladies would just be like, man, you know, they might be dressed down, you know, looking good, like they're like, what is it about that lady? Not really realizing that it's the spirit inside of her that they're attracted to, you know. Because um, it's something more special about what God puts inside of us. We're, our price is far above rubies. So. Anybody else? Um, can I chime in quickly? I'm sure you have. Um, just a quick thing, because I stopped, the Lord convicted me to stop wearing makeup and to stop wearing weave. So I've gone like 100% natural. Um, in my hair and no <laughs> so no relaxer no nothing on my hair and I don't wear makeup mm -hmm. I don't do <laughs> later on when I get married <laughs> I don't know but um, I don't know the Lord convicted me to not wearing that and to dress more modestly and just to cover up and just you know so he's so that was like a difficult process because I didn't understand and I didn't realize how attached I was to makeup and hair. I had no idea how attached spiritually I was like to these things like, you know, so the Lord literally had to prune me and take that away and strip it, strip, like just completely take, like strip everything from me so he can work, with, so he can work on me. So I don't know that may change in the future. But um, that's what the Lord has done for me. And I, I've seen a massive difference spiritually. Um, I've seen a massive difference in how men approach me. I, people think that when you don't wear makeup or you don't wear weave or you don't do certain things or you, you dress modestly, um, like you don't get attention from men. You actually do. <laughs> like, well, it's the right type of attention. It's the right type of men. And they respect, they respect a woman covered up. They really, truly do. They respect a woman who is dressed modestly. They respect a woman who's dressed very ladylike. So, yeah. So for me, um, in terms of appearance, that's out, out, outward appearance. That's what the Lord has done for me. And I truly believe it's connected to like your inward appearance as well. Um, again, sometimes like sometimes we don't know how attached we are to these things. Like, if I show you a picture of me, like, two years ago, three years ago, you'd be like, what? <laughs> but you can literally see the difference spiritually. If you open your spiritual eyes, you'd be literally be able to see the difference spiritually. Like, that person, to a worldly person, I'll probably wear, I'll probably was more beautiful. But to a godly woman, I'm more beautiful now. You know, it's just a spiritual. Even, like, the pictures I see, like, you go on Snapchat and you can see, like, the history. I'm like, who is this like who is this person? Like, this is, like who is it? It's actually scary. It's actually scary. Like you don't recognize that person. Like that person's completely dead. I know it sounds hard, <laughs> and it's, it's, yeah, but that person is completely dead. Like I can't recognize that person. I can't relate to that person. So um, 
yeah so it's just I just yeah I just wanted to touch on like the outward appearance but what the Lord has done for me I may wear makeup in the future I, I, I have a desire to when I get married on my wedding day but I feel like yeah it's just yeah because I, I just one more thing like I've noticed like when I do me personally when I do like door myself up I have a spirit that comes over me like I'm the best thing walking you know I feel like okay no one is looking better than me in this place I'm looking too nice I look better than every girl on the planet and that's not of God <laughs> that's pride that's pride you know so I don't think the Lord wants that I don't think the Lord wants that so yeah I just wanted to share that in terms of outward appearance so yeah all right. Anybody else want to share? I want to agree with her. Um, you're right. That's why the Bible absolutely says that beauty is vain because she, you know, um, people, people, uh, society does standardize women saying, you know, you have to wear makeup, you have to be immodest, but um, beauty is vain because if you are that stuff, but how are you with skin? You know, how is your, um, how do you treat people? How do you um, come about yourself? You know, you, you know, people, you know, yeah, you can wear makeup, you can uh, do whatever you want to look like how you want to look, but that's just, that it's your physical appearance and it's empty because it doesn't tell your your your, uh, your your makeup your the way you dress doesn't tell you, doesn't uh doesn't dictate who you are so that's why um that's why um like in, in a relationship you know men would want you know men would, 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 uh, wouldn't want to be with a woman who um like uh if she if, if she's not committed to him like being faithful she can be pretty but are you faithful you know you can be beautiful but are you gonna um are you gonna uh, are you gonna be uh, are you going to give yourself to your husband? As the Bible says that the woman is for the, her body is for the husband and the, and the husband body is for the woman. So yeah, that's why Bible says absolutely absolute beauty thing because it can't, it can't, it can't, uh, it can't do who you are. Yeah, I agree. Anyone else? I, I agree with that. I agree too. Um, I was thinking in terms of like, uh, like when I used to like, cause like three years ago, I used to pack the makeup on. Um, and so I had a similar conviction and I stopped um, flat out in my hair and like wearing makeup. And I realized that I don't get as angry. I used to get real mad. Like I had a problem with my temper. Like I, I get real mad. Um, and I also felt like I was more like bold in a way like sometimes I'm tempted to put makeup on because I'd be like man why am I not more bold you know <sighs> but at the same time um I don't want to be something I'm not in a way um and so it's a challenge I haven't been able to let go of waxing my eyebrows that is probably going to be the last thing to go for me <laughs> Um, I don't want to have a mustache and beard, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's it's definitely a process, you know, it's it's a, it's dying to our flesh, you know, like sacrificing those little things that yeah, like I miss, you know, my husband misses my my flat my flat iron hair and stuff. He's like, you know, you can flat iron your hair. I'm like, what about if I wear a hat? You know, because I really feel convicted. Because <laughs> I just wear a hat then. <laughs> like, okay. But um, this thing is serious. Y'all know how it is. <laughs> if God give you a conviction, it's just like you got to go with it no matter how long he's on it, you know. Um, I, I think I did blow dry my hair like maybe twice in the last year or so just because I just had to get at least close to it. I'm like, oh. But um, I won't put on the red because um, I used to have this real bright red lipstick. My mom used to say, don't wear red lipstick because that's for the, the street yeah. ladies. You know. <laughs> But when I got to this one church, there was a church, it was an AME church, and um, all the ladies, all the older women was wearing red lipstick. And I was like, well, um, they're all business women. I guess I'll try it. But I found out later that they were all in different sororities along the way. And, um, and I was just like, okay. So I had to come out of that church just so that I could focus. Um, and I ended up going to a non-denominational church. But I... I picked up the lipstick from there and when the lord convicted me about it i was like all right my mom taught me the first time the right way so i'm just going to stick with it <laughs> so now I, I use a little bit of um actually i just use beeswax and it does pretty good but i don't have any on right now but y'all know 
<laughs> but it does work though it works so um but you know we got to work around I guess maybe kind of just and it, it feels good because I feel like when I'm 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 not wearing stuff that shows too much and you know all those things I can actually move in the spirit easier because it's like you know if I if I got my arms you know everything covered my cleavage no cleavage is showing I got a long skirt on if somebody asks me for prayer I'm on it you know you know I'm in the right mindset and everything God's gonna move you know but if I got um sometimes if I have everything dressed down and stuff like that um and if I'm looking you know a certain way I got my mindset on you know being attractive or something instead of being like kind of ready to go like you know what I'm saying for for God and so it helped me to get more focused again on my spiritual walk so it, it helps because sometimes that stuff can be a distraction it isn't always but it can be so, yeah and I feel like we have to pay attention to what that spirit when we put on makeup we can't ignore that there's a spirit that comes there that there's a confidence there's a pride that comes we can't ignore the fact that there's a pride that comes with putting that on so we can't just ignore that and just you know it's not from the lord so we, we have to pay attention to what that is what is that spirit why do i mm. when i have on makeup lashes and what why do i now feel like i'm better than everyone else like what is that we have to address that you know so um I just, yeah, I just yeah you're that. right yeah. I thought about it like you know that scripture that says that um a woman is she's like shamefacedness or something like that is in the bible I was like because when I first started not wearing makeup I felt that I was like hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I felt the shamefacedness like, yeah I was struggling I can't I'm lie I was through it. <laughs> any event I was like struggling I like like this is humbling me right now this is humbling me <laughs> oh my gosh I still got the old pictures I can't I don't know but it's, it's, it's a process <laughs> it's a real process but anyways yeah. but no yeah. um no no condemnation to anyone for wearing makeup it's just y'all know how it is when you get a conviction and you're trying you know what I'm saying it's just like that you know so it's just I don't know um I, I would challenge everybody to try to go natural with the hair and, and everything um, and just see what God will do because he's really amazing. It's amazing. The process is amazing. It really is. Actually, I would like to uh, chime in on that. And, uh, when, when, uh, when, when almost said it was so, I just like had one of those moments like, mm, there was, there's an addiction to the hair and the makeup. And if you as a woman of God or a woman feel that you are not enough, Feel that you're not beautiful. Feel that you're not pretty without wearing hair and makeup. That that's when it's sin. That's when it's against God's will. You are fearfully and wonderfully made without a stitch of weave, eyelash, makeup. When the Father, when God Almighty look at you, He sees His daughter. He sees Alma, Tammy, Brittany, Karime, Precious, Nicole, Laquisha. Laura, Shantique, Candace, Tiffany, uh, Lakeisha, Shayo, he sees rain, he sees you. God don't say, well, I see you, but you need a little makeup. I see you, but you need a little weave in your hair. You know, no, no, you are perfect the way you are to your father. And if y'all who have kids, you see your children, you love your babies just the way they are. And what makeup is, is falseness. It's false. It's, it's, that's not you. That's an extension of you. And, and I see women that and some women wear makeup and, and their hair is nice and they have extension or whatever and it looks pretty. But if you think you're not enough without this stuff, if it's just not a change of hair, I don't like to wear my hair long today. If it's not simply that, you go into falseness. You go into trying to be something that you're not. I've even heard the Lord told me one time, he said it's witchcraft. You're trying to transform yourself into something that you are not. So you just have to be very careful because she said, she said addiction. She didn't even feel, you didn't even feel right without no makeup. Wow. I was watching a video. I've watched several videos on YouTube. God was telling me he didn't like those videos because it, it seemed like the women 
it had to be made up in order to be pretty. God the Father don't think you got to be made up to do nothing. He loves you just the way you are. You're beautiful just the way you are. So we have to consider those things. And you have to consider those things that you're teaching your, your daughters that you're not pretty enough unless you have extensions in your hair. You're not pretty enough unless you got weed. You know what I'm saying? You're not pretty enough unless you wear lipstick. You're teaching her that. You're teaching them that. Is there anything wrong with, with, with straightening your hair? I don't see. I don't see nothing wrong with technically straightening your hair. But I think we, uh, with your hair, whatever style you do it, love you the way you are, and don't feel like I got to or I have to have this in order to be pretty. And that's when it gets to a point where then the Lord is going to deal with you on this, this thing, um, because it's it's not it's not pure. Anything that's telling you you are not pretty enough without something and, and then and then that's the issue and also you, you guys mentioned about the inner beauty it's all about the inner beauty the spirit because there are people who are women who are that that are beautiful on the outside but that's pain that's gonna change that's gonna, you know you you have no control over your your, your physical beauty how you look uh what well, this is how many people do but um it uh but the inner beauty of love, joy, peace, the fruits of the spirit, of all those things that we had mentioned, of gentleness and self-control and integrity, honesty and righteousness. These are things that you can put on. You know what I'm saying? Of love. And even to the point where it's there's a sickness in our society that they're, they're teenagers who think they have to have a nose, nose job. They gotta get breast implants. They gotta get a Brazilian button in order to feel feminine. In order to feel enough, no, no, that's not that's not God. That you have to spend thousands of dollars to change your nose, to, to add some extra fat on your butt, so what you can do gently. But who? So you can see, so see somebody see some watch your butt as you walk down the street. That is not good. You feel this all this external stuff. You're perfect the way you are, unless you're sick. You got a deformity. You don't need surgery to correct something. You're fine the way you, just the way we are. You are. So when it gets to a point where you're addicted to it, you, you feel like you can't go without this, this thing, that you can't wear your natural hair and just feel glorious and beautiful, and then you have, then that's a problem. So, yeah, I kind of agree with what you guys are saying. Um, it says in First Samuel uh, 16, the Lord does not see your outward appearance, but he sees your heart. So he looks in on the heart and man sees the outward appearance of you. And everything we just spoke about in Proverbs 31, this woman, it had nothing to do with how she looked physically, but everything to do with who she was on the inside. So it was a woman who had wisdom, who had generosity, she was diligent. She worked with her hands. She was patient. She had dignity. Uh, she was devoted to her family and the things that in which God had said before her to do. And none of these things were even mentioned regarding how she looked. Um, so beauty is definitely in the eye of the beholder and it should be in the eye of the beholder of Jesus Christ. And like he says, it says in 1 Samuel, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or in the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So God is looking at your heart and the type of person that you are. And are you carrying the fruits of the spirit as you walk through this thing called life? And that is a virtuous woman, a woman that can walk in the things that God has called her to do. And can walk in those fruits of the spirit and demonstrate those different things that are inside it's not just about the outward appearance because god will guide you with your outward appearance like everybody's at different stages some of you guys said that you know god has guided you to stop wearing makeup he's guided you to stop wearing hair um so all those things i believe come kind of in stages you know and also sometimes like when you're coming out of the world you know i know for um i'm natural underneath this i change things up all the time um but that's not who I am. I can wear this today and tomorrow 
might be a bunch, you know? Um, I don't have to depend on a wig to make me feel beautiful or feel good about myself. Um, it's just something that is kind of for fun, you know? Just something fun to do sometimes, change it up. But it's not who I am, you know? So whether you wear hair, no hair, makeup, no makeup, what God is looking at is it what's inside of your heart. Um, does anybody have anything else that they want to chime in and add to this conversation? Yes, I wanted right. to. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Brittany, you can go ahead and then I'll just say it later. Okay, I just want to add too. I agree as well. Um, <laughs> it's kind of up to you and your conviction with God or what you can handle what your spirit can handle because um i believe too like when you do um sometimes when certain people wear makeup they do take on a different spirit the spirit of leviathan um which is pride but also it's not so much of that it's um what people do as far as making makeup or wearing makeup or um wearing weave their god they completely put it before God and they make wearing makeup and um, wearing weave their God. And that's what make it a sin. So like you said, um, Private Candy, like changing it up, wearing, you know, weave or wearing makeup is not wrong. I mean, I, I don't feel like there's nothing, um, there's nothing wrong with it. But when you put it before God and this is like that's all you can do or you wake up oh I got to put on my makeup or I got to wear my weave or you like if when you put it up before God that's what makes it wrong that's what I want to add I think I saw uh um I had a hand raised um I, I didn't raise my hand but I'll just I'll just touch on that um I definitely understand that everyone's um at their different stages it's not you know and yeah I definitely understand and respect that everyone's at their different stages with the Lord and the Lord speaks to everyone differently but I'll definitely encourage you I will definitely encourage you this is someone who was had the makeup the, the lashes everything I would definitely encourage you to fast from it and see fast from it from for like a month and just see how it changes things spiritually with your walk with the Lord I would just just encourage that just just to try it just to try just you know no makeup no hair no any nothing artificial um for, for a set time and see how that changes your walk with the Lord and just sort of go from there but for me it's done wonders it's done it's it's done yeah it's just completely heightened it it just takes it to another level it takes it to another level so i just encourage you to do that but i understand everyone's at the different stages so yeah i see flora has her hand up hi yeah i agree a hundred percent um of what everybody was saying and i, I definitely agree that uh makeup is important to a lot of people Honestly, I'm so glad they made makeup. <laughs> I'm one of those that I'm not like stuck on it. Gotta have it because like I said, I'm, it's very creative to me. You can have it, not have it. But I think like you said, it's your walk with God and it's what God actually convicts you of and what he tells you to do. I'm glad he didn't tell me to do that. Okay. I mean, that's not my thing, but believe me, he have definitely stripped me in different areas of my life that it's like I was naked before men. So Sometimes if God do that, he do it in a different way. Um, so I would say, you know, do what God tells you to do. He knows you. He knows all about you. Uh, he knows if hair is a thing for you or not, or, you know, too much makeup. He'll let you know. God is a God. He lets you know real well. He told me this week, I, I love wigs. I wear all kinds, but I had so many of them. That I actually had a trash bag to throw them away. <laughs> That's how many I had. But it's been years I had them, you know, but some kind of way it's like, yeah, I said that subject, I was laughing to myself. I was like, okay, God, you really did. So this, you told me to throw all my wigs away, but uh, he didn't tell me I could not wear them anymore. Just I had too many of them. But, um, you know, as ladies and stuff, we all 
you know, get to different stages in life. I have went natural. I have cut my hair short and I wear it anyway, but I've never been convicted in any way about wearing a wig or not wearing a wig. And I think that's your personal relationship with God because he knows how to script exactly what he needs to script from you. And he knows me quite well and he knows exactly what I need to be taken away from me. So that's all I needed to add on that. Yeah, Thank you. I see, sorry, Ken. I see um, Candice and then maybe Tammy to get a hand. Okay. Um, I'm agreeing also at the same time, like for some, like what's a struggle for one person is not necessarily a struggle for another person like me. I gotta put down the chocolate bars. See, so <laughs> it don't matter, you know what I'm saying? I didn't had short, long, bald. It that's never been a struggle for me. Well, when I was in high school, maybe for a while, when my mom permed my hair and all of it fell out, and then I braided it because I didn't want to go to school like that. But other than that, that's never been a struggle for me. So I can pass from it, but this is not a struggle for me. You know what I'm saying? Like um, when he says, um, anoint your, uh, or wash your face, go out so that you're not doing it for the people. And we have to, um, we have to be careful when we are convicted about something that once we get set free from it, that we don't then turn into the judge. You get what I'm saying? Because that may have been a struggle for you, but don't get you according to it or convict me because of it, because there's no con condemnation, you know what I'm saying? So we all have, like you said, we all have our own struggle. So we can advise one another, but we have to be careful not to be judgment either because it's not a struggle for you. And you're right, uh, Kenneth, I understand what you're saying. I think what she was uh, saying, like I said, again, nothing wrong with some hair. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of a black woman. You know what I'm saying? A black woman, well, a wig, a weed, and if it will be black or and white or whatever. But I think what we was, we're saying was to the point where if you don't feel beautiful Absolutely. without it, then I yeah. really feel that that's a problem. If I you agree. feel like, oh, I can't be seen and I have, no, I have a, then that's a problem. Then that's oh, a problem because it's an inner issue with you that you think you need this outer thing to fit. You should feel great and wonderful, fearfully and wonderfully made just the way you are. And we all like, I love to get a fresh shave. I love to get a fresh shave. Make you feel good. There's nothing wrong with that kind of stuff. Taking care of your body, looking good, wearing your clothes, getting your hair done. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it becomes an eye, when it becomes a side, you decide telling the girl, you got to have, you have to have these. You have to wear this dress. You have to look a certain way. And to the point where they think they're not enough, or you think you're not enough, then then that's the problem. And so we have to go back and reevaluate it. So that's what I think what we were talking about. Not saying that, hey, you can't wear no, you can't wear weed. Well, you we can't wear, you know what I'm saying? But to the point where even when you do wear, put it on, you like a totally different person when you put on makeup. And that's not you. You know, we want to see the beauty that you are, God of style. So that's what I'm, that's what I think is important to be making. I know. I, I get that. And I agree. I have a 13 year old daughter, and I finally let her get blue in her hair. And then she didn't want to go to a game because she didn't. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, so um, she wanted to go and then she was like, we can sit in the car. And I was like, no, ma'am. So she was mad with me because I was like, no, no, no. You done made me waste my gas. You getting out. You know, so she ended up going to bed, having a good time. And then the next week, two of her friends had their throat out. And she was like, mom, I'm glad that you made me go because I understand exactly what you're saying. Like, as her mom, I want her to be confident regardless whether she's fitting in or looking like everybody else or, or not. And that has to come from within. So if you don't want to participate in stuff because you don't have hair that, you know, that's not yours, then that's the problem. I agree. I agree. Yeah. 
Okay. Amen. Sammy. Amen. All right. So, um, what I want to say is, was this coming makes me think of, um, if God has not given you a revelation about certain, a lot of the times we change it, you know, until God give us a revelation because everybody have a different revelation thing. But just talking about this whole thing, it just reminds me of a. Uh, when I grew up and I used to, I didn't wear a lot. I probably put on some thick, and I always put on little colors and stuff. And I would work place. I would get so many different colors. But then when God changed my life, and I, it took a while to wean me. Like right now, I really want to wear my girls. They go get their all, all kind of money, but I ain't trying to do all that. But I. Love to have braids, but I'm not gonna go. <laughs> I know I will be addicted. I probably wouldn't stop. I probably want to have to have the hair done all the time. But, um, God gave me revelation about it until He gave me that revelation. I I would be doing whatever I do, but a, a different. I stopped when I stopped. I didn't get as many compliments. I a running after me. I didn't have me. Uh, when I was dressing my, I don't have people whistling. Fine, this, 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 I ain't had that anymore. Kind of reminded of I remember uh the girl when I'm back in the day no more. And she was telling the testimony how it go, but saying uh, that if you're walking down the and somebody hot. Like, hey, girl, that you look good. You need to check and see if something might, something might right. Check that shit out. <laughs> Round and wear some smiles, and you ain't gonna get no on the person. Gonna man of God, that is so true. That is so true. But everybody has to come into this night for themselves. You know? And I hear the bash. No, want to come in on. Amen. One more thing. Uh, we have some people having to leave. Blue Flora left. Shantik left. We thank God for you guys for coming. And also, uh, just because you're getting a compliment don't mean it's good. You know what I'm saying? Because the world will compliment you if you look like the world. People, guys, guys will slap guys on the back if they're talking about all those bad things that are done sexually. That's, oh, you, you are a man. So you don't want to be complimented by the world, the worldly thing. A man, men, come on, man. I, you don't want every man who's walking down the street to say, hey, you look good. Keep in my clothes, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because you thinking with the wrong thoughts anyway. Not all of them, but a good percentage of them. So the world will compliment you if you look like the world. But at how you look, you need to be, hey, what's my intent? Like, you look good, you look your best, look your best for you and God. And then, um, but, uh, every time somebody, you know, if it's a current trend, everybody who's in that trend, people will compliment you for that trend. But what if you ain't trending? What if, hey, you know, if, if everybody's wearing bandits so tight, you can, you, they can't breathe in, uh, but you said, nah, nah, that's, that's, that's not wrong. That's not right. That people will think something wrong with me, but I'd rather be someone who thinks something's wrong with me than to, to go along with the crowd and, uh, crowd and think, hey, the pity. So as women of God, even now, you see, you see the people, Nicki, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Beyonce, all these women have no problem with showing everything they got. You know what I'm saying? I, I work in a, I work in a school. I've seen little girls with clothes so tight on. I was like, how, how could you? How could your parents let you leave the house like that? It's just, it's, and but they don't know no better. Somebody, somebody bought those clothes. But the world is standard of beauty is not about it. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with modesty. You don't have to show all your good. You're good. The Lord, you, and your husband. It ain't for everybody to see. So we don't want to conform to the world's standard of beauty. All right, uh, Katie. All right. And I hope no one thinks I'm judging them here. I hope no one thinks like I'm judging you or. Because no, I'm not, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm just. 
not be yeah, respond. I'm not sure about myself, you I don't want to respond just where it was. It was okay. revelatory. I got yes. Like you were right. And so many women right now, I know. And so many people. I'm not talking about you need to wear a wig or you change your hair. We're not talking about that. We're talking about an like you said, an addiction to it. You got a problem. You scared to leave the house, or little girls have been taught they they have hair, but it's not enough. Yeah. The way you yeah. look is not enough. You're not pretty enough unless you wear these at lashes. Unless your hair perm, even that, there's a cultural trend now where African American men and women are accepting their natural hair. Man, that natural hair. It used to be a time all black women, men, permed their hair because they thought they had they had to wear hair straight to look like Europeans in order to be acceptable. That gets to a point where something's wrong with that because God did not make your hair like this. So if you think something's wrong with you, the way God has made you, and that you're not enough, something's wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you feel like you can't leave the house unless you have certain things, then you have to re- you have to rethink those things. Um, I think see ten percent. I wasn't addicted to makeup, by the way. When the Lord convicted me, I wasn't heavily addicted. So I, li- I could go out with no makeup. He just, you know, so I just, just to let you know, I wasn't heavily addicted to You're makeup. You're fine, Alma. I'll, but I, that's something I Yeah, so just to let you know. That's something I Yeah, just, yeah okay. Okay, I think Tammy's hand is up again. I wanted to say something quickly about the makeup thing. Like, for me? Oh, sorry, were you calling... Tim, sorry about that. Did you want to say something real quick? Or okay, okay. I was gonna say when I was wearing makeup, um, I got incredibly vain with the makeup. Like I almost attached makeup. Um, and unfortunately, since I've backed away from it, I've observed a few things about the society. It's almost like they attach makeup with growing up for women, like Narnia, like they show the Narnia children, and then they showed them in their reunion when they're older. And like the only difference was they had more makeup on their face. And it's just like, really, do we really attach our professionalism or our level of being coming an adult or maturing to how much makeup we have on our face, how dark our lipstick has to be and how much more hair we have on our head, like or shininess or if it's flat iron now instead of being natural and stuff it's like we grow away from who we were designed to be and I don't think that's what God wants us to do um we're just talking about how like um God has numbered the hairs on our head so if we flat iron it and they start falling out and it's our fault he actually convicted me about using this particular shampoo because my hair was falling out like it was just falling out and just like don't use that shampoo on your hair because it's gonna make it fall out um I'm using like the cheap suave well I stopped because of that but I have to use something more professional now because (laughs) until I can get something um I'm just going to be using you know like natural oils and stuff like that but really I mean he wants us to have that hair and and, and the Bible even talks about our hair on our head being the glory of a woman it's our covering um and then the man you know of course cutting the hair short and keeping it short and not being afraid to show the glory you know of the Lord upon his head and stuff. Um, but the covering of a woman is um, the angels on her upon her head. And so um, if we can hold on to these, it's good because you want to have some angels by your side when you go out there and battle. You know what I'm saying? Like when you go in the prayer room or if you go out there and you pray laying hands on people, it's nice to have that, uh, that covering um, over our head. And so, um, you know, not doing stuff to destroy our hair is actually a good thing. Um, I also used to wear really like the makeup I would wear. It would be like, you know how beautiful, Candy, you're beautiful, sis. I would wear makeup like your color. And I'm not, I'm like, I'm like two shades darker at least. <laughs> because I was, I was like, well, I just, I just like this one particular shade. And I just was, you know, I wear that. Then I had the brighter red lipstick than that. And it's just like, I didn't look like me, you know. And then I had my hair was straight. So you could even tell, like, is she like, what is she? You know what I mean? Like, and and I like doing stuff like that. I like being different because it's like, you know, I thought I was doing something, but I didn't realize that I was being in 
is there a word is it called ingenuine it wasn't genuine god want us to be like gen yeah what yeah it wasn't like for me for me it wasn't like um you know how they say you're trying too hard it would be like it's like i want to win like it was like a competition like uh, almost like i gotta i gotta be the best with this if i'm gonna wear makeup i might as well be the best i gotta get the mary Kay. i gotta get um the stuff lipstick that doesn't get dry that stays on all day long um i gotta get the like, lashes everything and it's just like that's all vanity all that stuff is gonna wash away how did i behave where was my heart do i have pride issues What's going on with in, inside my heart? And I think that's why God had to like wash that off of me. Cause he just like, that's not helping me to use you the way I want to use you. So I just had to like, let it go. And I, I didn't know how long he was going to do it, but it's been like two years. Now. <laughs> I, I look at my videos. I'm like, Ooh, cause I cringe. Cause I'm like, Oh God, I don't have no makeup on. I look at them and I'm like, Lord have mercy. I can put some makeup on. I'll be looking good, y'all. But that's my mind. That's my vanity, you know. And I gotta, I gotta, you know, not let the flesh get in in the way. Um, so, anyways, I just wanted to be. Um, you know, God has honest. everybody has something <laughs> that God um will work with them on and begin to strip them away in time or whatever, whatever it is that He's working on specifically with you with and for you and the other young lady, it was the makeup. Um, but. Like I said in the scripture, she is far more than rubies. So your value extends far more than what you have on or your makeup. Um, so I wanna go ahead, um, thank everybody for participating tonight. Um, thank you Precious for participating. If you guys are looking for Precious off of this Zoom conference, she makes music, um, she ministers, she has a YouTube channel, it's called Precious Love. So you guys go look for her on that. Um, also, thank you to Rain, who was on here also. Um, you can find her on YouTube, Rain, R-A-I-N-N, to N, Lewis. You can find her on YouTube, and God uses her to minister and teach things that he has um, put on her heart also. And, of course, we are on here with Prophet Charles. His, his channel on YouTube is called Prophet Charles Walker. God uses him in many ways. Um, he ministers. He speaks whatever God gives him to speak. And he also is a very good, um, how can I put this? You're a very good coach, Prophet Charles. And what I mean by that is he's an encourager. He's a natural encourager. And um, if you're looking for me, my name is Candy Nicole. It's K-N-D-I, Nicole. And you can find me at Candy Nicole Speaks on YouTube if you were looking for me. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us, um, everybody who participated tonight. And I want to go ahead and end with prayer. And I want to just say um, thank you, Jesus, for being here amongst us tonight. Thank you for your encouragement and showing us what it is to be a Proverbs 31 woman, a virtuous woman, a woman of virtue. God, we know that you have, you don't look at the outward beauty, but you look at the inward beauty. And I pray that as we leave tonight, that we can begin to look more on the things that's inside of us and the wisdom and the generosity and the patience and the diligence that's talked about in this Proverbs 31 woman, that we can install these things into our life and move forward in that walk. Uh, thank you guys for participating tonight. Um, Prophet Charles, is there anything else you want to end with? Yeah, I thank God for you guys uh, tonight. Uh, number one, we want to pray for uh, Jenny. She's had an issue with her eye. That's why she had to leave. So we want to keep Jenny in a, a, a prayer. I say it's so important for iron to sharpen iron. That's the whole point of me having this as a women's event. Uh, uh, I just think, you know, the women of God need a platform. The women of God need to talk about issues with women um, concerning uh, the Lord as a single mother, as single women, as a, uh, as a mother, as a wife. And I encourage everyone here, get trade numbers. Um, if you want to, put your number in the chat. And if, uh, so if you don't mind, any, any of the women of God to, if you want a, a friend to call and uh, talk to, pray with, have Bible study, uh, just to talk about life. We all need friends. And, and, and iron sharpens iron. Who knows the things that you can say uh, that's your experiences in life, your testimonies, or you, you just want a friend. Hey, how you doing? You know, 
No, no. It, it's, it's, God wants to have a balance in all things. Sometimes it's good to talk about scripture, have someone to pray with somebody. You want to, hey, let's, let's go have lunch, you know, or let's just have a talk. You know what I'm saying? Someone who's been a mother and gone through the same thing. Some of you guys are older and wiser. Some, some people need encouragement. So I think that's also something very important that I would like you guys to do. Um, just connect with one another so you can have someone you can talk to and a fellowship with. Uh, thank God for you, Candy. You did an excellent job. Thank God for Precious and Rain. Thank God for everyone who made comments. Um, I'm going to post this on um, YouTube. and Feel free, y'all. Feel free to um, reach out to one another and talk and share. You know, I have people right now. I got any list of friends. Even I, I have people who are above me who are pastors and bishops. I can call and say, hey, Bishop, I, I need some advice. I need to talk about some stuff. Or I have some people who, who are leaning on me, you know what I'm saying, uh, to, for advice and wisdom. I always, I'm, I'm always there and patient with other people to be able to help them any way I can. The best thing you can do and God is pleased with is you can minister to someone else and don't think you're not able. Don't think that you're not worthy. Don't think, think that you can. You know, there's so many things that we can all do. And um, thank God for you guys all coming out. If you guys got any suggestions about uh, future conferences or topics you want to talk about, let me know. Let Candy, Precious, Rain know. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're all here for you. And check out their channel. See what the Lord is giving them. And what, what is the Lord giving you? You know, what are your gifts and talents? And, and um, so I just thank God for you guys. And um, we probably will just end tonight. And Father, I see that I've already prayed for uh, Jenny. Father, I just did lift her up again. And I know that you're going to do a healing in life. I thank God for everyone here. I don't know if anyone has any prayer requests, any issues, Father, but you know all things that you're the blessed, healed, lead God, direct, strengthen, strengthen everyone here, pour out your anointing over their life. You say in the last days that my sons and daughters shall prophesy. When young men shall see visions, old men shall dream dreams. Upon my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit upon uh, uh, pour out my office in the last days. Father, let your daughters speak boldly, prophesy. I'll use them in a mighty way to influence the king and let them be pleasing to you. I ask for forgiveness for anyone here, anyone even watching, of any sins and iniquities, draw them close and relationship with you. Just their children, just their husbands, just their future husbands. That's all areas of life in Jesus' name, amen. Like God said, gold is coming. The property is lent to you. God wants you to have wealth. The woman in the Bible, she had, she had some money. She it ain't said nothing about her husband money. It said she had some money. She went and bought and took care of everybody in her household, made sure her household had some. So I pray that God, every woman of God here has wealth, has property, has fine finances, uh, gold to do the things that you would have them to do. And no stress and worries about finance. We count the hairs on our hairs. And uh, we're fe they're fearfully and wonderfully made in Jesus' name. So, yeah, God told me that gold, he's going to bless gold, y'all. So you need to get at least $200 worth of gold stock. Uh, there are many apps out there that, that, uh, that help you with that. Uh, so, and y'all see, I have called all, all night, y'all. But uh, God bless you. And um, you have a blessed day. Uh, if, okay, so people put their numbers there. If y'all need to, they're sharing their numbers. If you want to get their numbers, go ahead and get it. Is, is that you, Lakeisha? Okay. I, I knew you said use that word. And I think that was one of your patients or something that was making a noise. Father, Father, I just pray for her patience. She works with uh, people who have disabilities and stuff. And even with that, um, sometimes we have gifts and talents we're not even aware of. Prayer is the most important thing that you can do for anybody. You might not can't change their life. You might not can't give them money. You might, but you can pray that God heal, bless, deliver, set them free, save them. You can do so much just from your knees. You praying to God. That's how we get things done in the kingdom. God bless everybody.